on this part of the debate, opening up the debate uh, with Arun Jaitley on our budget night. Arun Jaitley, Manish Tiwari, Sitaram Yachuri joining us on this part of the debate, and we have more leaders lined up in a few minutes. Now, Arun Jaitley, the finance minister, self-certification. No policy paralysis, he says. Nothing ever went wrong. We've got the economy back on track. Fiscal deficits are under control. Current account deficit is looking good. I'm looking good. I've done the best I could in two years. And I think people should congratulate me for what I've done. Seem to be the tone of the finance minister today. To the finance minister and to uh, the minister representing the government, Manish Tiwari, on the news hour this evening, what would you say, Arun Jaitley? Well, I think we can be more charitable to the finance minister. He almost conceded that this was a farewell speech. That's why he said that uh, let history judge us. And therefore, when a man uh, is making a farewell speech, he is entitled to be a little more than kind to himself. And I think that's what the finance minister did today. Now, the benchmark that he had set for himself was that the fiscal deficit should be lower than 4.8%. Now, he had to achieve that come what may. He couldn't achieve that by revenue buoyancy. He couldn't achieve that with the revenues going up. He couldn't achieve that with the economy expanded. He couldn't achieve that with the economic activity and the volumes of economic activity expanding. So he achieved that by somewhat a dubious process. Let me cut down expenditure. He cut down expenditure when it came to capital expenditure. And when you cut down capital expenditure, you are being unkind to the future years and to the next generation. So he cut down on grants to the states. He cut down on social sector expenditure. He cut down on um, uh, infrastructural expenditure. So you cut down expenditure all over and say, listen, I've spent less and therefore the country has been able to save more and therefore I have a presentable optical view as far as fiscal deficit is concerned. I think that's what he tried to achieve. But when you cut down these, all these expenditures, you shrink and contract the economy. Therefore, the growth rates are going to be challenging for the next successor. And as I wrote today in, in, in a small piece, that Mr. Chidambaram will feel a relieved man. I think the real worries are going to be for his successor. Well, well uh, did, he, did he play around with the numbers? Was he dishonest with the numbers, Manish Tiwari? And why is it so important to achieve a number when the numbers backing it are not completely realistic or honest. I mean, let's look at the big achievement of fiscal deficit that he says he will maintain. He admits there will be 35,000 crores of fuel subsidies which will be rolled over, which basically means that I'm only taking one example that had this rollover happened, the fiscal deficit would have been much higher. Now, my question to you, Mr. Manish Tiwari, is what is more important, giving the country an honest perspective or giving the finance minister a good report card? Well, I think, uh, Mr. Goswami, uh, unfortunately, it seems uh, you and your very eminent panelists have uh, got it all wrong. First of all, to the point about the farewell speech, if uh, Mr. Arun Jaitley was to just rewind to Mr. Jaswan Singh's budget speech of 2004, he would find that possibly the same phraseology was used by Mr. Jaswan Singh, you know, when he signed off on the vote and account. So therefore, you know, was the UPA, was the NDA in 2004 really bidding farewell to itself when it presented the vote and uh. account? So therefore, you know, to draw that extrapolation, I think is erroneous uh, to say the least. Number two, you know, coming to whether the uh, finance minister had indulged in a process of self-certification, which was dubious. I think the finance minister very honestly presented the perspective of the last 10 years. And the singular thing which came out was that wherever you draw the poverty line, whichever figures that you may take, 140 million people have been lifted out of poverty in the last 10 years. And the fact also remains that notwithstanding the global economy going into a twin crisis, the first the, the, the great meltdown and then the Eurozone crisis, even between 2004 and 2000, uh, 2009 and 2014, the economy clocked 6.6 percent. And if you were to juxtapose it against what other emerging economies have been doing in terms of growth rate, you would find that India has uh, done much, much better. 
And to the uh, point as to whether, you know, subsidies were rolled over, let's not forget this is a vote and account. This is not a full-fledged budget. So therefore, there obviously so, could so not be any revenue mobilization proposals. So, 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 so no, therefore, no, what, no, no, so, so therefore, not, a, a provision has been made. So a provision has been made that's in uh, for, for the expenditure which the government is going to incur. First of all, and not Mr. only, Mr. No, Mr. not Tiwari. only, ex and, and not only expenditure which has been budgeted for, but allow me to also point yes. out, Mr. Goswami, that what Mr. Jaitley said yes, that, you know, expenditure of states was cut five and a half lakh crores, you know, on, on an average, I don't have the exact Sir, figure with I, me, but five and a half lakh crores is what the central government is going to transfer to the state governments. And if you look at the trend line of the transfer from 2004 and 2014, it's been going up every Sir, year. So therefore, therefore, I think sir, on I think, each count, the is, finance uh, minister possibly presented a picture which was uh, correct, oh. which was objective, and which uh, okay. told the story no, as it no, had no. unfolded. No, no, but that's all. No, no, one second, one second. Just hold your thoughts there, Mr. Manish Tiwari, because, because first of all, I think we'll have to get Mr. Jaitley to respond. But, but before that, Mr. Jaitley, with your permission, I'd like to get Sitara Mechuri also into this debate to just know where he stands. Uh, you know, uh, but, but, you know, B Mr. Tiwari, I mean, in one shot, when the finance minister of India contradicts the Congress vice president who said there are so many loopholes in decision making, you can drive a truck through them. When the finance minister contradicts the prime minister of India who says before the AICC that decision making has totally slowed down, then I think I'd really be concerned where the information and broadcasting minister stands between the... Congress Vice President and the Prime Minister. I'm sure you won't contradict both by saying Mr. Well, Chidambaram well, is I correct. Think, well, well, unless I you think, decide uh, to be with Mr. Chidambaram and therefore contradict Rahul Gandhi and Manmohan well, Singh in well, the same I breath. Think, uh, well, I think, uh, Mr. Yeah. Goswami, no, no, anyway. not, no, no, notwithstanding your attempt to no, be no, I said insidious that, or humorous or, or, or maybe both, let me very respectfully point out serious? that the Honorable Finance Minister was absolutely correct when he said that over 6 lakh crores of projects, you know, which were lying locked up because of various regulatory and other issues, you know, have been cleared in the Cabinet Committee on Investments over the past year and a half. So therefore, when he rejected the notion of a policy paralysis, he was absolutely correct. Sir, and yes, you know, there are issues sir, with sorry. regard to decision can I, making. Sir, can I, and those, can I those make a point here? Were, anyway. were because of no, no. extraneous I, and external I, I'm getting, circumstances I'm getting a rebut from, No, no, I'm I, getting I, a rebut. I, I, okay, one second. Allow me to just complete and I'll, I'll hear the rebut in entirety. He's coming I, in after that. One second. No, I'll, 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 one hear, second I'll hear the rebut in entirety. Let the two other panelists... No, so you asked me no, a no, question. You, I'm going to be quiet. I'm contradicting Rahul Gandhi. That's fine. No, uh, you, you asked Sitaram me a Mechuri. question. Otherwise, I would have allowed yeah, you to yeah, go yeah, on to your theory. Please go ahead. Yes, I mean, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tiwari. But uh, but my uh, I mean, basic point is that you see, as, law, as far as policy paralysis is concerned, that may be a problem with the government and other fields. But our state of the economy is not because of policy paralysis. The state of the economy is because of policy, period. It is the policy that has been followed which is responsible for the economic woes. And therefore, look at it from that point of view, that the fiscal deficit target was a target that Mr. Chidambaram set for himself and this government set for itself of keeping it below 4.8% of the GDP. Now, how has that been achieved? Just, just have a quick look at the figures that the finance minister himself put out today. The gross tax revenue is falling short by close to 80,000 crores of rupees. And how did this yes. shortfall is, is made up in, in, in by uh, saying that you uh, reduce fiscal deficit? It's been more than made up by cuts in your expenditures. From your budgetary estimates that he gave last year to what is the revised estimates that he put out today, you will find that the central plan outlay has been cut down by, I mean, not spent what has been allocated by something like a whopping 66,000 crores of rupees. Your plan, our central plan was reduced by 63,000 odd crores of rupees. Your likewise, your assistance to plan expenditure for the states and union territories has been reduced by close to 18,000 crores. So by contracting your expenditures, you've contracted the economy. 
and by contracting the economy you can show that the fiscal deficit has been controlled but the net result no, is, is that you have start. you have a compounding a of the economic start. slowdown so it is not policy no, no, paralysis this is, a, this is, a, is the policy per se which this, is slowing down your economy and thereby increasing the woes of the people which the finance minister admits that food inflation no, no, is worrisome that? so the net result is that this fiscal deficit target has been achieved at, through a contraction. This stage, at this stage, ah. I understand. This is a very serious charge and I'd like to, just, like to just summarize this before I go back to Mr. Jaitley. A very serious charge emerges at this stage of the news hour debate where, Mr. Tiwari, the government faces the charge of using tricks in the book to make the numbers appear better than they are. Let's not forget, subsidies expenditure should have been dispersed in 2013-14 of 123,000 crores, which is a tad more than 1% of India's GDP. It was rolled over by the government to keep the fiscal deficit lower than the 13-14 target of 4.8% of the GDP. So you are using these tricks in the book, which in my view are fairly transparent, to make your numbers look better than they are, which is the charge here that you cannot certify yourself on the basis of doubtful numbers, Mr. Tiwari. But yet, before you respond, on the question of policy paralysis, I think Mr. Jaitley also wanted to come in. Mr. Jaitley. Well, I have just three points to make on this. How is it that the rest of the world is looking at the Indian economy? From 1991 till 2004, <coughs> the world looked at India as a good investment destination. There was a certain amount of confidence that we gave to the world at large and investors were willing to come in. Post-2004, I think UPA 1 partly survived on account of the impetus of the past policies. But then UPA 1 was caught between two distinct ideologies. The party bosses wanted a pursuit of populism where you can straight away go in for vote banks rather than prudence. And the government decision makers caved into the party bosses. Slowly we moved to a situation where Indian economy has gone down as far as the investor priorities are concerned. The domestic investors are also looking elsewhere. Secondly, Mr. Chidambaram became the finance minister in 2004. He inherited a growth rate of 8.5%. Rather than just touting their own logic, last three years, you are leaving behind an economy where the average growth rate of three years is less than 5%. Thirdly, Mr. Tiwari can today come and boast of the fact that we have a cabinet committee on investment which has cleared projects worth 6 lakh crores. These are projects, more than 300 projects worth 7 lakh crores which have been held up for 4-5 yeah. years. They were held up for want of political leadership in the government. They were held up because the Prime Minister could not overrule ministers who were objecting. And therefore, investors who wanted to invest in those projects really were losing confidence in the Indian economy. Mm -hmm. People started looking elsewhere. Now, when you found that the backlog had really mounted up, in the last few months, you constitute a cabinet committee and say, well, I start uh, 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 clearing all these projects. Would you you don't yeah. boast of the paralysis of the last six years, but you say, well, in the last four months, I have cleared these projects. So I am a very active uh, government as far as these projects are concerned. I think by the time they did that, it's become too late. And once it's become too late, probably the world today feels that if the economy is to be revived, you not only need right. a policy impetus, you also need a political right. change in India. Well, well, I think that's a, that's a straight and tough point that's been made, Mr. Jaitley. I know you have to go. I thank you for, 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 your, uh, for your participation. I, it's always great to have you on our budget debates. Well, Ravi Shankar Prasad, welcome <coughs> to the debate. This debate becomes big right now. Ravi Shankar Prasad, welcome to the debate. The opposition leader is replaced by the deputy opposition leader in the Rajya Sabha on our news, our debate. Derek O'Brien of the Trinamool Congress, so we have full par participation across the spectrum. Rajiv Chandra Shekhar, Member of Parliament and Entrepreneur, welcome. Now, I put that question here, should we, should we first, before, before we answer that, do you agree with, with, the, with the, uh, Derek with what, uh, with what Arun Jaitley said just before he left there, that the whole idea of fiscal prudence, as well as trying to push the economy, was far too late a December 2013 realization for this government? Well, we left this government, the Trinamool, you realize, left the government in September 2012. Yes. 
Uh, but I think before I, 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 I'm going to give you two or three of our broad observations today. Uh, our first <coughs> observation is that we really believe what we saw. I don't, we don't think the finance minister was even interested in presenting this budget. If you no. watch the foot, if you if you watch the footage very Come carefully, on, we're not discussing this, body language. No, no, uh, he, he actually tried three times to stop to stop presenting the budget. What are you that's saying? That's not true. What that's, are you, you watch the true. footage? <laughs> that's was, fact, that's, in fact, there were members Namika, of parliament Namika, Namika, uh, from Namika, Namika, Andhra Pradesh opposing it, and he was trying to get them out so that he could read his budget. He never. He was told by you watch the footage. I was there in the gallery. At least twice he sent message to come and I'll not do this. I'll what? stop. I don't want to do this. So he Why? What do you mean? I, I think, think, okay, let's get to the substantive yeah, yeah, the point. The substantive point is, to me, to me it was summed up in one sentence. He said, let history be the judge of the last 10 years. Well, the reality is history will not be the judge. The people will be the judge in the next, in the next few months. But he told one blatant lie. And before I say anything else... That's a very serious term. Yes, you want before to I say anything else lie. about... He told absolute blatant lie. And that was on GDP, uh, on, on GST, I beg your pardon, on GST. He, he gave the impression that there were states who were holding up GST. Yes. My charge is that there were certain clear promises made to the states on handling CST, on bringing CST down from 4% <coughs> to 2%, and there was 20,000 crores to be paid to the states. I can talk about Bengal, certainly Bihar, and so many other states who were owed 20,000 crores. And the only reason GST hasn't come through, nothing to do with the states, it is the finance minister's fault. That was a blatant lie. Everything else we can discuss later. Okay, fine. Ravi Shankar Prasad, I'd like you to come in here. Uh, you know, on the points, Mr. Ravi Shankar Prasad, on the points that uh, Arun Jaitley raised there, would you want to back them up? We've had a clear self-certification by uh, Mr. Chidambaram for his own role and a denial of policy paralysis, which in your view... Which, in your, your view, is the more controversial of the points Mr. Chidambaram made in his uh, speech today? It was not a declaration of self-certification, or no. It was a command performance of self-certification, bereft of any substance. All right, let me differ with my good friend Derek. I grant him that history will judge him. He can make that claim. But he has to explain how the very competent, quote-unquote, Harvard-educated finance minister who brought a legacy of 8.5% of growth, admittedly, which he commended in his economic survey of 2004-05 as the best in 30 years, except two years, that was the period of Mr. Bajpayee government, how he squandered it away to 4.8%. Mr. Bajpayee government began at 4.8% in 1998. And now we are hearing a lot about international factors, global meltdown. When Mr. Bajpayee government was there, in which I had the privilege to serve as a minister, there was Kargil war. There was Pokhran II international sanction by the entire world. There was attack on the parliament. There was 2002 um, drought. There was East Asian economic crisis. There was earthquake in Gujarat. Yet, we did not talk of any alibi. We came at 4.8, and when we demitted office, but still they have, they keep saying, they keep saying, no, no, one second, they keep saying,